Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm working on the third corner of my sampler that I started when I did a couple classes with uh, Jennifer Coulston, who was the author of three books. This one in particular is one of our favorites. So what happened was, if you're new to the channel, I spent a day with her in her class and we focused on foliage and she sort of got me started with just some interesting stitches. Now my homework was to finish said foliage and then explore not only the foliage a little more but also explore what we did do in the class as in finish it off ready for the next um, catch up which is coming up very very soon. Actually I think by the time this video is shared with you guys I may be at the class but I'm just not sure when I'll be popping these videos up. So what I've done so far is finish the stem that was here from the Jennifer Day and then started adding in some additional foliages. Like, can't you tell I'm getting brave compared to say this one? It's all very similar where now I'm really starting to explore some of the gorgeousness that it is in her book. She has a whole section on stems. So I opened that up when I sat down and just kept glancing to it for a little bit of inspiration. Did I follow anything in particular? Uh, probably not. But I certainly... I see how she does all this curling and just gorgeous. So I didn't even look at that section. Must have been back in the book. I did start to notice some of these leaves were a little bit different to what I'd been doing. So that's how I started doing these, just sort of to thicken it up a little bit. And this one's going to be all about roses. So I got to the point where I've, I've stitched in enough of the background that I want. And um, there's a roast chicken in the oven. And I've got about 40 minutes, I think, to catch you guys up, do a few roses, and then after dinner, I can just go for it. I don't want to do what I did last time. After dinner, I just kept going and going. And by the time I realized that I hadn't really done a video for you, there was so much to show you that I think I sort of missed an opportunity to keep you rolling along with me. So that's what I want to do is I want to have a play with some of the flowers and um, sort of then spend the evening on it. Now, I did find, this is the little rose that she taught me and I thought it was in that book, but it's not. I picked up this one and had a little look through it. Now, this is her foolproof crazy uh, quilting book and to be honest, I haven't really studied this one. And I was actually came across this section and I thought, oh, I could put some little butterflies into this piece. So I've got to remember that when I start filling the gaps to work some little critters into it. But I did find the rose that she taught me. Now she calls it. I think it was a squishy rose. It's a little bit further on. I've it might be in that first one, first book, but I haven't ruched rose. That's it there. It is a classic and so simple. So I'm going to do a couple more of those with you. And then we might have a go at one of these spiderweb roses. I've been doing them for a little while, so that shouldn't be too hard. Uh, so yeah. Maybe I sort of want to do a few daisies, but that might be better on this the fourth corner. So I'm thinking we'll do a bit of a rose theme here and then some of these little leaves. So this is the little pile of ribbons that I had from the lesson. And I'm pretty sure that is the ribbon that I started with. And of course, you are meant to iron them, and I didn't. So I better go and turn on the iron. See, I'm so used to not doing that. I oh, learned so much just to run the iron over it. In the class, they had hair straighteners. 
which just made it easy, was sitting at our desk and just run these, they're only little, I never knew they existed, tiny little hair straightener over the actual um, ribbon. So I'm going to just turn on the iron. So we've got a little iron here. Just bear with me as I get myself organized. <clears throat> you can see how the chicken went in the oven and then I was like, I'm so going to do some stitching tonight, but boy, what's going to happen? I'm going to go through to the wee hours of the morning and realize that you guys have been left behind. This makes it harder to show you what I did when it's so dense like that, that last one. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. Plug in my little iron. Wouldn't it be nice to have a PowerPoint oops, that is close to my desk heaven forbid one day one day but we've got it it works it's just i wasn't prepared which i'm sure you're not surprised i did notice that there's a little bit of green here i need something connecting him so i have to have a think about that the other thing is i will need some green ribbon let's do the ironing oh my goodness there's a bit of a scrap what other colors are in here oh aren't you a fancy so bold am i that bold am i that game we'll think about it <laughs> maybe not this one doesn't need much ironing it's not as crimped that must be the leftover bit from when I did those little petals. So I might as well give it a little iron. Won't take much. This silk ribbon is very responsive to heat. Like I can feel that grabbing. So let's just back the iron down. So if you're wondering what these mats are, I get asked quite regularly. They are literally ironing mats that um, I think came from the quilt industry. So when they're quilting and they want to just touch a little piece of fabric with iron, they can just set these little mats up next to them and give it a little iron. So a genius. And I've just started filming on it. Like it's just the best surface for me. It's not good when I bring the glue, glue bottle out, but. So the ribbons that Jennifer uses a lot are Color Strain. And I found out they're a Australian company. I believe she's based on an island, Maclay Island, just off the coast from Brisbane. It's really not far. It's probably... Oh, I don't know. I don't want to quote it. Probably 20 minutes on a ferry out to the... There's like a cluster of islands out in Moreton Bay. The biggest one being Stradbroke Island, Russell Island. And then in amongst them is Maclay Island. Apparently, that's the home of Colourstream silk ribbons. I'm really impressed with them, I must, must add. So I've just unplugged the iron. We don't want any little problems there. Got plenty of pink ribbon. So let's do some of these little ruched ruched little flower roses. Now I need a needle that has a pretty good big eye on it. That's the one. Cut ourselves a piece of ribbon. And we're going to run some more roses down. So first of all, we need to attach ribbon to the needle. Another little trick I learned. I see it is in her book. So if I had have read the book properly, I would have learned how to do this. But of course, I just looked at the pictures. I'm sure we all do that. But there is a section on how to thread your needle and there's a soft knot which I do it every time but it still seems to pull through because I'm 
heavy handed. Now we're going to pop up in the fabric where we want a little rose. Trying not to pull it through. That's it. Then all we do, these are apparently quite common, but I had never experienced them until I went to her class. <laughs> it was so funny. I was sitting there. She showed it to me. I'm thinking, oh, great. We're, we're getting into some flowers now. That's exciting. So I had a go at this one and um, it just worked. And I was just like, wow. And I had a moment. And I, I must have made some funny little sounds and everyone looked at me and I just looked at them with a I think a stunned mullet face and said, I've just I've just had a moment. The ruched rose is my new favourite toy. And they were just laughing if to say, well, Where have you been, girl? Well, certainly not playing with ribbon embroidery, it would seem. So same thing. Um, you can, I believe, just run the needle straight down. But in Jennifer's book, she recommends you go like a zigzag. I've done these before on earlier videos. So this is nothing new if you've been around me for a little while. But ribbon embroidery is a rabbit hole. I thoroughly recommend dropping down sometime. I was a bit fearful of it. I certainly wasn't a brave little explorer. I think it's because the ribbons are not cheap. So the few that I had prior to really getting into this YouTube business, um, I was squirreling them. I wasn't, wasn't really sure how to use them. I was just doing basic daisies and like those little leaves where you just turn back on yourself. So I wasn't really confident is probably the word. There we go. I might leave it at that because I don't want to thicken it up too much. I'd rather do something else down there. So I wonder, can I do a bud? Of course I can do a bud. How would I do a bud? Just have a little bit of pink and then do the old leaf routine I think that'll work I'll give it a go and then I'll need to do a little stem out to catch the little bud so we'll just do a couple I've got to keep an eye on the time because not only is, you know, dinner fast approaching, I can hear a fox. It's a bit early for a fox. I can hear a, a whiny little sound. Might be the puppy next door. They might be out and he's waiting for the family to come home. Sounds like a fox. Usually you hear them in the dead of the night, don't you? As they start lurking. I'm getting a little bit short on my ribbon, so I'm going to end that off. Gee, it does sound like a fox. The foxes come out just after sunset. I suppose if a fox is hungry, a fox will come out just after sunset. It is dark, so they can be a little bit on the sneaky side. That's gone now. No, I can hear it. Unless it's an owl. We have curlews. They're an Australian bird that make quite an unusual sound. And there's a, a pair that are in our street. I don't think it's them.
if it's still going at the end of this little session I've got with you guys, I might have to just have a sneak outside and see, see what it is. So I might pop another little petal here. This is, I think, what I'm trying to achieve here. What am I going through? She said, if it's hard to pull the needle through, stop because you're probably going through some ribbon. And I was, and I still am hard. What's, what's happening here? Oh, yeah, ribbon as well. Find a new spot there. That's better. Gee, it's an unusual little sound. to go and investigate. I suspect it's the puppy next door just he chats a lot to my two so if they're not home he could be down where they all sort of meet and hang out for the day sort of whimpering calling to my two. My two are in their closure for the evening up near the house so there's no way that they can come what is going on? Why is that so hard? See, once again, I was going through the pink ribbon. So, let's try that again. I can smell the chicken. I can smell the chicken. My husband thinks I'm crazy. I said, I'm just going to go and film the video for just a little bit. Because if I don't, I will sit down after dinner and that'll be it. It'll be, it'll be all done. Okay, that's pretty good. Can I do another one at the top? Why not? Got the ribbon. Go. It just sort of softens it. I love how it's variegated. Very pretty. I mean, I might bring the vine up and do a little bit of greenery up there. I, I don't know. Like that's a problem with these little stems. Where do they end? You just keep going and going. Okay. There's a little bit of ribbon left there. I'm thinking I could probably get one rose out of it if I was to come back down here. Gee, it's got me intrigued, that little sound. It's like a, it's like a little, little whiny, it could be an owl. It's a bit early for them too, isn't it? Oh, just after sunset. It is pitch black out there. It's interesting. I've got a mystery to solve. I'll let you know at the end of the video when I come back, which most likely will be tomorrow morning. Gee, that's tight. I know I'm going for the ribbon, but... Uh, I won't bring the pliers out because I'll end up wrecking my needle. So I might just get the rows happening without. And then use some needle and thread just to anchor the back there. needle and thread so I must keep an eye on the time so whether this this video I nearly said movie here I'm thinking I'm a movie maker <laughs> this video might be a little bit stop and start as I come back and show you what I've just figured out and then dodge off again and do a little bit more so we'll see how we go I 
I think it's a bird. It's quite an unusual sound. It's very quiet out there, I must say. It's sort of, we've just had a shower of rain go through, so it's very quiet. No, there it goes again. Okay, so I won't waste your time with the green. It's that little leaf there I've done before. So let's have a look at maybe a spider rose. I might just use one of these colours. That'd be pretty. Let's give it a go. So that's the old classic pinwheel, five spokes. You can use more spokes than five, but five's good as long as it's a odd number, I believe. Might use this little guy again because he's a bit on the blunt side. So as I weave around my little flower, it won't split the thread as easily. So I haven't put a lot of greenery in here yet. It was sort of, as I was sort of thinking about it all, I thought, well, I really probably need to get my flowers in position before I go and fill it all up with greenery that may A, be in the road and B, not even needed. So... This was the last corner we worked on at the end of the day and I was getting tired. Like it's a big day when you're doing needlework all day. And I said, she, well, she said to me, you know, get your branches all positioned. And then she was like, do you know some of those little flowers like the spider web? And like, yep, she said, well... Get a few of those in amongst it and then we'll see you next time so there's my five spokes now it's just a case of weaving over under over under to create the little flower they're really pretty when you've got variegated thread i recall doing a heap of them on the little stitchery that i got at the forage retreat when Nikki Franklin, she's a UK embroiderer and she does really teeny tiny pretty embroideries. One thread, two threads maximum, occasionally three threads. And she had some of these on a sampler. That was our activity for the two days that Nikki was teaching us. So you see my spider web is not even. But that's okay. We can we can work with it. I'll just keep going round until it really fills up. You can use the little points that are showing and have them exposed to make a different style of flower. But I'm going to attempt to cover them all because I want that that rose look, and they don't have any spiderwebby points coming out of that. The other one I could do is a grub rose. Some nice little grub roses would be pretty somewhere on this. Using a bullion knot. There we go. I might just do one more lap to make it nice and full. And I'll go back down there. So there he is. And that's before I do something in the center of him to give him some beads or, you know, you can really play with those little guys. So there's a little spiderweb rose. Are we going for time very good let's do a spider web rose again but let's let's do it in ribbon let's be brave 
Let's go to my old ribbon and see if there's a colour here that that would work. Going to need a bit of it. This is a variegated one. Are we brave? Oh, it goes into goes into blues. These are second hand ones I picked up. I suppose we could stop we could stop at the blue. I don't know if I want blue popping up. Maybe we just do a bit of a... Uh, what are we going to do? We'll cut the blue off. And we'll see what this does. If we don't like it, it's all good. It's a sampler. Maybe I'll go down here where there's not a lot of space for too much and then I won't need much ribbon and it won't get out of hand <laughs> and I can always just use him as a, a little feature and then find a white ribbon and do smaller white ones back from him because I've really only got that bit. The rest of that goes into a blue and then it looks like it goes into a, a lavendery colour. wagon wheel there that spike doesn't look big enough let's just take a moment I'll have to listen back this video and see if I can hear the sound it's still going Probably you'll never know because the moment you sort of sneak out into the dark to try and work out what an odd sound is, especially when it's an animal, they, they're quiet and they're watching you traipse around in the dark. So we're coming into spring. Things are warming up. So there's all sorts of bird activity around. So even the pigeons are making funny sounds because they're all trying to attract mates. So maybe... Maybe it is a bird trying to. I just don't know if that wagon wheel is going to be big enough for that ribbon. I bet it's not. We'll see. Nothing like adventurous embroidery. Okay, so that's it there. We might aim to have... I really could do with that iron might aim to have the pink go down first so it's got a bit of a dark um, a dark center to the flower that might be pretty but then it probably won't change color quick enough so I may not even see anything other than that pink I don't know what these ribbons are. I don't know their history. They feel a little bit thicker than what I've been working with. So they're definitely not the same brand. This was a bundle of random ribbons from Melanie. She's on Instagram doing random pieces of fabric and pattern books and purveyor of reclaimed textiles. I mention it all the time because I'm constantly just watching. It's nearly like an auction site, but it's not. It's like the picture pops up and then you say, yes, please, if it's something that... Now, hang on a minute. Think about this, girl. We need the light end up here. I think before my knot was a little bit heavy duty. So that was what was dragging through the fabric just reflecting on why that was so hard to pull those few through and I think I've done it again let's start that again I think I think I'm creating too big of a 
my lumpy knot there at the top. Talk about learning on the fly. It's great, isn't it? Learning all these different. Got to get it right through. That's it. That's it. Oh, it's really coarse, this ribbon. Interesting. Okay. So, I haven't done a soft knot at the end. I'm just going to... Oh, gee, it's coarse. What is going on? I think it's because my ribbon is so wide and thick and it's... It's not as, it's not as dainty as this. It actually feels like it's not silk. It's probably more of a synthetic product. But we'll be able to use it. So let's go. Same principle, over, under, over, under, to create. I might just go. Needle first. Oops, Reginald, let go of the ribbon. Yeah, it's certainly not behaving the same as that silk. Isn't that interesting? It's going to make a nice little flower, but she is not the easiest product to use. One will persist because I think it'll look really good. Got to remember too, I've just done the process with a little thread. So a thick ribbon is it's going to act differently. It'll bulk up quick. I'll have a rose before I know it. If you're in a hurry and you want roses really quickly, go underneath there. That's different again. I like it. It's not the easiest product to work with. There you go. If you're looking to buy ribbons, stay in the silk category. Oh, it is pretty. Hmm. What did I do? I've got to go under now. Look at that. Oh, I do like it. It's just starting to change colour. So what I might do is just go one more. Then I'm going to end it off because I think that's big enough. Yeah, so I just go down and then that little bit that's left, I might be able to do some little buds or something out of it. It's not going to be the most pleasurable experience. At least there's no brand name here. <laughs> so I'm not saying anything out of school. Mind you, I probably would be pretty honest if I don't like a product well, it's not that I don't like it. If I don't enjoy it or it's not doing what I need it to do easily, I'll be certainly telling you. Yeah, I've got enough there to probably do three more. So I'll add that to the pile. So I think, I think that's probably going to be enough to give you a bit of an idea of what I'm going to be up to this evening. I do want to have a look through my ribbons, my silks that I've got and see if there's a small, small hot pink or something ribbon for some, maybe some French knots that look like little buds. I think that could be handy to have. So, so far, I'll leave that needle on there because I'll be using it shortly. I'll put that in there. I'm going to need more green. 
I don't think I'll dip into them. I'm going to save them because otherwise I'll have nothing to play with when I get to the class. Sort of looking for something really pink. Maybe I should consider a lavender. That's only got a little bit on it. Might be able to use it up. Let's have a look at mine. Mm. There's a colour changing looking one here, but it's real thick. Maybe, maybe I could bring a little bit of that's. That's got potential. Bring a bit of that apricot tonage in. All right, that's enough. It only all ends up down the side of the couch. All right, that's looking good. We're gonna need some more of the green. We will need the cream and we need that to do. Okay. So as for beads, let's talk beads now so that we've figured that out. So you can see, I'll just sort of skip around the whole area doing different versions of rose, those three roses, the spider and the ruffle, and then um, see where it's at. But I think that'll be more than enough. I had wanted to play with sequins too. That'd be pretty. And they would work in there. Might be too much pink. I might need to tone it down a little bit with him. And I haven't used him yet. I've used that guy in this first one. But I haven't used my favourite. I think that's probably enough. Oh, there's a little darker sequin. But it might be one of those scenarios where it doesn't handle itself. Yeah. It could be too dark. Let me zoom in. It could be too dark for the background. So it's a little bit similar. Oh. I'll leave it. I think the champagne -y pink one would be a better choice if we want to go down the sick one. See what I mean? It at least handles itself. Oh, look at the shine. It handles itself on the piece. Whether that becomes... No, it's not going to become a centre of a rose. Like, settle down, girl. All right. That's pretty good. So that leaves probably about 20 minutes left of the video where I can come back and show you what I did. Um, let me just go back up. I still have these here and I'm not sure if I need them we'll see we'll see how the flowers sort of go maybe I do need to do something like this to balance it but then it's starting to look a little bit same same and I thought maybe this comes up but that looks weird that's a feature in itself I don't know I don't know this is another little bee that just caught my eye might be getting too pink. But they might be good sort of over there, away from everything, but dragging the pink across. We'll put them in the pot too. There we go. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. We're about 40 minutes into the video. I will be back to show you the adventures I had. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Won't be long. Hello, everyone. I'm back. Okay, dinner has been had. There is a rumour that the chicken may have been a little dry due to someone not paying attention to her cooking due to beading. <laughs> but it's just a rumour. It's unsubstantiated. So I'm back. I finished what I wanted to finish. I do want to do a couple more little cast on stitches here and I thought I'll do them with you guys. Um, but starting on the bottom here, let me just zoom in so you can see. I did stack of three beads up the stem of the main rose. Oh, I know what I haven't done. I haven't done this top bit. That's what we'll work on too. Um, some little beads around that fern. This little guy here was some French uh, colonial knots using the thin 
uh, ribbon. And the orangey one that I pulled out of my little container of ribbons. The This one here was the little purple one that I sort of created this big bud with some little buds coming out from the top of the stem. Just something a little bit different. Get away from the rose look. I've got some little sequins here with a bead in the centre. Uh, what else did I do? Some little pistol stitches in there just to feather it up. Remember I had drawn out here some big scrolls. You can just still see them a little bit. I end up doing the scrolls and I put one there and one there. I didn't want it to look too uniformed. So I thought if I just do a little guy there and one there, that'll sort of make it look a little bit more random. Um, what else did I do? I put some white little strokes through here. That white thread was what I used to create the pinwheels for those three. And then the leftover ribbon was just enough to get a few little buds back down through the actual stem. So what else did I do? I think that's about it. We might just have a little look up here and see what we can do. Um, okay, so that was the little orange one there that I used as the colonial knot through there. So really sweet. Then dropped a little pink bead in amongst it. Let's see what we can do at the top. Alright, grab my needle and thread. I went and investigated that sound that we could hear, well I could hear, through the video earlier. And I think it must have been a bird because the neighbours were home, so it wasn't the puppy. My two were sound asleep, so it wasn't a dog. I eliminated them pretty quickly. And um, as I sort of walked out to the edge of the patio, it stopped briefly. And I stood there for a bit and I sort of probably counted to 10, so to speak. And then it started again. And then I moved a little bit to try and sort of direct my ear to what direction it came from. And it stopped and it didn't restart and I thought oh that's must be you know must be a bird and they can see me so as for what bird I don't know not really sure it's a bit of a rainy drizzly night so I'm just not sure what's what it is Anyway, we'll probably never know. It was such an unusual sound. Mystery not sold. I'm just going to put those two up there. Maybe I'll do a third. I don't know. I seem to like things going to a point. I tend to make the tips bold. Just do. Oh yeah, okay. So there's. See how I did the little, little pink petals. I then put a little green guy next to them. So what I will do is do the same up here. We've got a little pink petal, and we'll do a little green leaf beside him. So it looks like the leaf is wrapped around. The little bud. I'd say I'll need to, to get some green thread in there too and just sort of put a few strokes of the bush just to connect it all a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. So there's another bud over here. So let's get a little bit of green around here him it looks like he's being cradled by a leaf it's a little bud here i think that might do it okay Won't need that again. I got a little bit left 
Okay, now this was my green. So let's get that threaded up. And I just want to put a few extra little bristles to sort of make it look like it is connected. There. And I might just connect that rose into there. So it looks like it is. I wonder, I'm just going to come back up here. I feel like I could probably do a pistol stitch into the air just to soften the end of that bristle. Might do one more going past it. That'll give it that tapered, the tapered top that I think it needs. So I'll go a fair distance. It's not exactly a rose bush foliage, but none of these flowers are true to what they probably are meant to maybe be inspired by. <laughs> That's the beauty of this type of needlework. And it doesn't need to look like anything in particular. It's not a bad thing. All right. Now I might just change my needle to something a little bit longer because I just want to add, using this leftover, I want to add a few more cast on stitches. I really like the... Um, the texture they give, the the height. Those there. But this time I might do them over here. I think it'll just add a little bit more interest. I don't need many. I might actually come down the branch a little bit. I think I could do with something in here to balance that big bud. So we might make him a decent size and we'll really, I'm just going to reposition myself, I'm going to really load up the needle with a heap of the little, and we might be able to then get a twist in it if it's more than I need, because the width that the needle is through the fabric there from the edge to where it entered because it came up I then went to the top of where the leaf is going to end up pointing to and came back up near where um, I came out originally so that's the width of little stitches that I need to cast onto my needle so it's just sort of like when you're starting knitting if you're a knitter and you're casting on your stitches. It's the same principle. Now, if I if I cast on exactly that width, it'll lie fairly flat. If I go a few extras and allow it to twizzle, see that's way past the width there versus the width there, I can get it to sort of look quite interesting. That's what I like about this. So I started in this direction and then I turned my work around and now I've turned it back as if I'm looking up the branch again and I'm just going to gently pull my thread through and I get this little little gorgeous leaf They're a lot of fun so then I go back down to anchor it so it doesn't go anywhere and it just gives you a nice twisty interesting little leaf so I might come down a little bit further it's probably a little bit loose because I was talking and mucking around I can see a stitch in amongst it that's probably not as tight as it could be but that's okay I'm the only one that'll notice and probably the teacher 
and all of you guys if you ever get a close-up look at my work you'll go there's that loose stitch it's because I sort of let go of my work and the needle and twisted around a little bit pointed and yabbered oh you can't even see Passing on. Did you even see the first one? Goodness sakes. This is not easy, this filming. I'm just casting on my little stitch. So I went down. Oh, I come up. I come up. Went across. Come back up. Back over to the other side. Now I'm going to pull that thread through making it nice and tight with my fingernail and finishing it off you get these cute little little grub like stitches so I'm just going to end that off and get some more I'll do a couple more just in case I Jig it up that first one by you guys not being able to see it. I seem to be sitting a little bit back from the table too, so I might need to just bring my chair in. Okay, let's bring myself back in a little bit so I'm not leaning over myself that's probably better all right let's find another spot to put one of these little cuties so thread the needle reasonable length it just gives you room to maneuver if the needle's too short you're just fumbling over yourself to try and get your hands positioned so Let's do this again. I'm going to come up where I want it to join the branch. Then we're going to go over here where I want it to eventually lay down. So that's my entry point. And then I'm going to bring the needle back up next to where I came out. And then I'm going to turn my work. That's probably just me getting a position so I'm going to keep a finger under the needle so she's high in the air there and that allows my hand to freely move here flicking a little cast on stitch onto my work now as I was saying before the gap is how many stitches I want if I want the little leaf to sit reasonably flat if I want it to kick around a little bit and be a little bit more interesting put some more on keep those stitches reasonably flat that first one I did one of them was a little bit loose so when it laid down I could see there was a little bump there so now I'm going to push the needle through all of those stitches using my nail to make sure they squish on and then you can see I'm going to go back down at the top and that will just anchor the little stitch. So that's it. So you can see there the loose one in it, back there. It's not too bad, but I can sort of see what went wrong. I know when I first did it with um, uh, Jennifer, one of them was a bit that way and it was straight away the first thing she said, oh, you, your little cast on stitch. That one in particular is a little loose, so just keep your tension onto your needle right. So if you're wondering why it doesn't quite look right, that possibly could be, could be it. So what we might do is up here I'll do another one, but I'll show you how you do the disc. Um, what did I do them up here? I did them over here where my finger is moving on the previous one really cool so I've come up so I've come I'm now going to instead of being out here 
like I did before. The needle's coming right in where I was. And it's just going to pick up a little bit, take a little nibble once again. Cast on. But this time, because the needle is so close to where I originally started, it's going to form a little circle instead of lay out flat. So you need enough little stitches or cast on stitches to at least get you a circle or a half circle or look at it. You can experiment with it. You might find that you don't quite make a circle and it's more of a half circle. That's fine. It'll look really neat anyway because it's it's curling around. So so there, there they all are on my needle, ready to go. That edge, that bottom edge where my nail is, is the knot. And the top is nice and fine. So I'm going to make sure that that knotted line is on the outside of the curl. It will tend to go that way anyway, but if it doesn't, you might just need to turn it. What have we got now? We've got a hang of a mess. The thread, the loose edge, you know, this, this edge has just not come through. But there we go. There they all are, gorgeous little shell. So if you were doing a coral or something like that, this little stitch would be great. See them all in a little fan? See that? How cool is that? And then you pull them tight so you finish off your little circle, pop your little stitch in, and you've just put like a little, a little, oh, what would we say? Oh, well, a little circle of stitches. Isn't that just the sweetest thing? I might do, I feel like I need a bigger stitch here, like I did here. But I might do another little cast on one up here. Just to make it look a little interesting. So I've come up where I think I want it. I'm going to just take a little nibble of the fabric and I'm going to begin casting on. Now I'm not, I've just twisted around that original. So come back, that's it. Gets tricky when there's all your work in the way. Let's get my fingers in the right position. There we go. I don't want this one to be too big because I am getting to the end of the branch. So I'm thinking it probably needs to be a little finer. But still, you want it to have enough to get a curl. That might do it, I think. So now I'm just going to make sure they are all laying to the one side. It'll make it easier when I get them off by getting that seam. See, they're all straight now on my needle. So I'm just going to pull my needle through. And there's my little curl. Oh, how cute. That's good. He's a fraction smaller than the last. So it sort of feels like it's right biologically. See, he's a tiny little, see that little guy there? He's cute. So what I might do is I'm going to drop back down here. I might end that off. So at least I know he's nice and secure and I probably don't have enough thread. Oh, I think I do. I'll give it a go. So there's a little little knot there. So I'm just going to come up down here. Go forward because this is a long one now. And start the cast on process.
This will just fill a little hole there I can see that needs just a little something. You can just keep going with this, I tell you. See, my th needles become unthreaded, but that's okay. It's because I don't have a lot of thread, so I'm really, you know, making it hard on myself. But they're nice and secure there, so there's no reason why I can't now just re-thread my needle. So don't panic if your thread comes out, is what I'm trying to say. Everything is sitting there comfortably. So I'm just going to re-thread and then carry on pulling it through all of those little stitches. Laying it down. That one got a nice curl. I'm finishing it off. So there he is there just sitting in behind that little bud. You probably can't really notice it, but just felt like there was a little spot there that needed a little something. So there you go, I believe my piece on this corner is finished. One to go. Okay, gee, I'm absolutely stoked with it. Absolutely, just love it. I love the variety you can create. I think the only stitch other than the stems and the pistol stitch. I suppose there is a few I've repeated. That little ribbon stitch, that's pretty common. The pistol stitch. Now this little cast on stitch is reappearing from the last one, but completely different effect. Look at it through there, versus just a few around. It's really interesting. There we go. Okay, everyone, I better leave it at that. It's about quarter to midnight. It's been a big day and it's time for bed. So tomorrow I can hop up and start thinking about this side and what we're going to do. Hmm, got a lot of space through here. So maybe I'll sneak up. This one's quite interesting. I was doing a, a connected open chain stitch a um oh there's a heap of name for this one it could nearly be feather stitch could be open chain there's another name i've seen too for it and then a little lazy daisy in amongst it just to mix it up this is a beauty where you do a big stitch and then you couch it down and then as you're couching it you pull it over to one side to create these little stick like feelings mm. that's the next one okay good lovely i will leave you alone now enjoy your day i'm off to have some rest all right see you in the next video guys bye